Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari 8-bit games, some which I grew up with and some which are new to me. Today is one of the latter. Today we're looking at a game called Nibbler, which was originally an arcade game released by Rockola in 1982, and it was ported to uh, the Atari 8-bit and Apple II series in 1983 by Datasoft. And it was a reasonably well-known game at the time, but uh, not one I ever actually spent any time with as a kid. Nibbler's arcade version was actually uh, very noteworthy in terms of gaming history, and it was the first game to offer a nine-digit score and it rolled over once you filled up that nine digit score. So it was actually the first game in which it was possible to score over a billion points. And this was so noteworthy that in 2015, there was a documentary released called Man vs Snake, which chronicles a number of players attempts to break this, uh, this record and get the world's highest Nibbler high score. Uh, now my skills certainly aren't up to the job of that and we certainly don't have 40 or 50 hours to spend on scoring over a billion points anyway. Um, but that aside, let's go play Nibbler. Okay, here we are with Nibbler uh, by Datasoft Incorporated, originally released in the arcades by Rockola. Rockola's Nibbler TM from Datasoft R, ah, programmed by Mark A. White. Um, if you do hear any dog barking in the background, I must apologise. It's very warm today, uh, so I have the window open and uh, next door's dog is having a bit of a conversation with other next door's cat, I think, who is sitting on our shed roof as we say this. So this is Nibbler, which is kind of a cross between Snake and Pac-Man, um, as you can see in the demo here. Let's just start playing, because we don't need the computer to show us how it's done, do we? No, we can start off player one, wave 01. Right, so your job in this as the pink Nibbler, the pink snake, if you will, with the bulbous head, um, is to eat all the stuff. I'm not sure what the stuff's supposed to be, but you have to eat it. And in true snake tradition, everything you eat causes you to get longer. And we all know what happens when your snake gets too long. It gets rather hard to handle. So you need to take a lot of care over handling your snake when it is in a fully extended position and ensure that it doesn't crash into anything that it's not supposed to crash into. Now fortunately... Oh dear. You ran out of time. You must also ensure that when your snake is at its full length, it must not also run out of time, because uh, that also causes similar disasters. But much as in Mega Mania last week, uh, if you do that, you can then get a huge time bonus at the end of the level. Anyway, um, unsubtle phallic imagery aside, yeah, there's a few differences between this and the standard snake formula. Um, the most critical being the fact that running into a wall does not cause you to die. Uh, the timer keeps ticking. Like if so, if you if you sit still for too long and don't collect things, then you're running out of time and lose life. Oh dear. My snake's head collided with its tail. Um, yeah, so if you want to, you can actually bounce around the corners. I'm not actually pushing the direction there, and your snake will just go around the corners. Um, there are actually situations where you'll just hit a wall and not move as well, so you can actually take a breather there. And what I mentioned in the intro about being able to score a billion points in this... That really did take like 40 to 50 hours of continuous play. And the fact that you could stop the snake like that was a crucial part of um, these players' attempts to um, get that elusive billion points. Because it meant that you could take a break in the middle of a session. Which was very important, as you can imagine. If standing at an arcade machine for 40 hours straight... You need a break. <laughs> oh, I think this is going to be bad. Yep, very bad. Disappointing. But yeah, I don't actually know if the uh, if this Atari 8-bit version here will go up to the billion points. Um, the score is displayed in the same way as the arcade machine. It starts with a pair of zeros and then 
um, more digits are added as they're required. Uh, but obviously, not being someone who is capable of playing Nibbler for 40 hours non-stop, I have uh, never seen a score above about 10,000 or so. So I will leave that to you to investigate for yourself if you're interested. Is it possible to score a billion points in Nibbler for the Atari 8-bit? And if so... Well, fair play to you, I guess. I find it fascinating when you hear about these high score attempts that take hours or even days of continuous play. Because sort of the the common image of arcade style games is that they're quick affairs. You play for like a couple of minutes at a time. And just to think about playing, with, well, this game specifically, for example, for that long. I mean, after a certain point, you must completely hit that, that flow state. Where you're just so immersed in what's going on in the game. Oh dear. Oh, just missed. That you just sort of start thinking nothing else matters. You're just so immersed in the experience that you can't even think about paying attention to anything else. That's a really nice state to get into, actually. I mean, it, it can be quite disconcerting if you suddenly become aware of it and you're like, whoa, what was I doing? But, um, yeah, certain games are really good at provoking that state. Particularly games that make a, a sort of strong effort with um, trying to be synesthetic. So if you take something like um, the classic Res, originally on Dreamcast, and uh, more recently on PlayStation 4 and PSVR and that sort of thing. That is a fantastic sense of flow where you just get completely immersed in the situation there. And people mock that game's abilities to have you strap vibrating things to yourself and enjoy the pulse of the music at the same time as playing it but i have to say as someone who played the xbox 360 version with um the four controllers attached to various parts of my body not my penis i might add um yeah having that sort of multi-sensory experience was a really exciting way to play the game quite unlike anything else and just because the visuals and the sound in that game are already so hypnotic, it just really helped get you into that that kind of flow state. We got through a level without dying once. That's good. Oh, we're going to break 30,000 points. Not quite. This is the furthest I've gotten in this game, by the way. The furthest I got, I got earlier on when I was uh, testing this out for the... Oh, God. <laughs> the furthest I got when I was testing this game out for the first time earlier was... Um, stage six which is where you might have noticed um it doubles in speed so that's nice all right last life it's a fun game though i like it um like i mentioned in the intro this is not a game that i played myself back in the day i was aware of its existence because i i quite vividly remember the box art for some reason because it had a really sort of um stylized and quite creepy sort of caterpillar snake type thing on the front cover of it and i remember sort of both liking and hating that artwork <laughs> oh god well, i got an extra life at some point maybe you get one at twenty thousand points or every twenty thousand points I don't know. Let's see if we can get through this stage. Yeah, you got to be really quick off the mark with your directions once it speeds up. My wife Andy actually gave this game a go earlier on and she struggled a bit with that. Because she was very much sort of trying to press the direction as you reach a corner. And as anyone who's played Pac-Man knows... This sort of game tends to work a lot better if you push a direction before you reach 
the passage where you want to try and go down you see now i'm i'm starting to have a bit of trouble with it as well because i'm not anticipating the directions i need to go because what i think happens is that your your hands are slightly behind your eyes so your eyes are taking in this visual information of what's going on on the screen uh -oh. And they're just not... If you try and do things as you see them happening, you're just not quite responding quickly enough to be able to um, to do that. And so if you sort of anticipate the directions you want to go... Oh dear. Oh no! That's... not what I want to do. I don't really have a choice. Farewell, cruel world! Oh. That's good fun. I might have another quick go at that. Can we do anything with select an option? We can add a player too. Um, I imagine that is turn-based. I would have thought, because two players on one screen for this would be absolutely chaotic. So, let's have one more try. See if I can beat that score of 58,000 points. Oh, this seems really slow after that. <laughs> that should mean I'll be amazing at it. But we all know that's not what it's going to mean. I'm still going to make a complete hash of it, as always. You've got very sharp corners as our nibbler. But we won't hold it against him. Alright, very nice. Not a big time bonus. So we're getting 20 points for each thing at the minute. I'm just... I'm going to keep an eye on that. See if like scoring goes up as you get to higher levels. Because if that's the case, it means that although you can get big time bonuses from um, dying towards the end of a level. Sorry, I'm concentrating. Uh, although you can get big time bonuses from dying towards the end of the level, it may well be more worthwhile to try and take aim straight for the higher levels. So how many points do we get per thing on this one? Yes, we get 30. Okay, so it's, it's, it is increasing by um, a small amount on each level. And I think the amount you get per tick left on the time as well is multiplied by that as well. So, although at the moment it says like time 700, for example, you'd actually get that multiplied by whatever the, the value of the, the things are on that particular level. Uh oh. Uh oh. <sighs> right. Only two more to go. This time we've got a lovely big time bonus, won't we? That'll be nice. Yeah, I don't know how well you can see that with how fast that's moving, but yeah, for every 10 points on the bonus meter, we're actually getting 30 points on our score. So, yeah, it is actually kind of in your interest to try and get as far as you can because the further you go the more rapidly you will rack up high scores I don't know if it stops at 90 though or 100 like some games do if we get that far we'll see if we do not we won't but yeah we're definitely getting four no I've made a terrible mistake But again, lovely big time bonus multiplied by 40. Thank you very much. 
Right, so I guess we should be getting 50 per thing on this one. And indeed we are. I mean, scoring system is quite interesting to look at because they're not something that a lot of people tend to pay attention to, particularly these days when sort of the concept of score and lives is uh, not especially relevant to modern gaming in particular. But in classic arcade style games like this, yeah, score is super important. And I always find it interesting how different different developers um, implement scoring and how they balance scoring so that it encourages you to push yourself further rather than exploiting the systems because I imagine that's quite a difficult thing to do no it's figuring out a way that you make sure your players aren't taking the piss with um how they play your game because as a designer I imagine it would really suck to spend ages making a cool game with all these cool levels and stuff like that and then because your your scoring system you didn't take the effort to check and see whether there are any exploits or anything in it no one sees the cool stuff that you built because there's a much easier exploit where you can get a billion points on level one or something ridiculous like that I don't know oh It's all gone cock. Uh, which way? This way. Yeah, so we're getting 70 points per thing at the minute. Which is good. I mean, I say that's good. Uh, yeah, good. So this should be 80 points. Assuming I can survive it. Yep, that's definitely 80 points. Om nom 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 nom. God, I have to... No! Go on, get out of the way, tail. Move! No! Oh! <sighs> Come on, I can do this. I can do this, Nibbler. We got this, Nibbler. You and me. We're a team. An invincible eating team. Right, so this should now be 90 points per thing. Yep, it is. So, question is... When we beat this stage... Assuming we beat this stage... That's a big assumption, isn't it? And you know what they say? No! You know what they say about to assume. Anyway. Yes, the interesting thing to see will be if we're getting 100 points per thing on the next level. Or if it caps at 90. The reason I say 90 is because... Um, as I record this, I've just re recorded the session for Mega Mania that you would have seen last week. It is 100 points. That's nice. Yeah, and, and in Mega Mania, it has that similar sort of escalating score thing, but it caps at 90 points. So, like, after a certain point, you don't get any more points per target that you hit in Mega Mania. Whereas in this, it seems to keep escalating, which is cool. So you're essentially getting 10 times the stage number for everything you eat in this. That's not going to work, is it? Around here. Yeah, we're actually... Oh! We've exceeded our previous score by 20 points. Oh yeah, yeah, it's still going. Up to 110 per thing now. 
And I fucked it up in the exact same place I fucked it up last time. So long, Nibbler. We barely knew you. Anyway, 59,010 points. As you can see, I'm well on the way to getting that elusive billion points, so you should make a documentary about me. Please don't do that. Anyway, that's uh, Rockola's Nibbler TM from Datasoft. R. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing. New episodes of Atari A to Z are on Tuesdays and Atari ST A to Z on Thursdays. Check out Atari A to Z .wordpress.com for a full archive. Do please also check out my other projects moegamer.net where I explore Japanese and Japanese inspired games from yesterday and today and videopackgames.wordpress.com which aims to catalogue the small but well formed library of the Philips G7000 video pack computer also known as the Magnavox Odyssey 2. You can also support my work on Patreon or buy me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again and I'll see you next time. Thank you.